the Fire Safety England Regulations 2022 come into force on 23 January 2023. The regulations impose new duties on the responsible person of residential buildings. This animation is a reminder of what responsible persons need to ensure is in place in order to comply. Why were these changes introduced? Following the Grenfell Tower fire in 2017, the Grenfell Tower inquiry was established. Phase 1 of the inquiry made several important recommendations to prevent such a tragedy from happening again. Examples of why change is necessary include the following. The Fire and Rescue Service cannot plan an effective response without information on the design and construction of the external walls. The Fire and Rescue Service cannot respond effectively if floor levels and flat numbers are not clear, and easily identifiable in low visibility or smoky conditions. If the Fire and Rescue Service are not able to take control of the lifts in the event of a fire, residents might use the lifts when it's not safe for them to do so. If the lifts provided for firefighters to use are out of service and they do not know in advance, they cannot plan accordingly and fire and rescue operations may be hampered. The government's fire safety consultation ran from July to October 2020. It included proposals to implement the inquiry's recommendations in a practical way, and in some cases, to go further. The Fire Safety England Regulations 2022 were then made to bring the changes into force. The regulations sit alongside the Fire Safety Act amendments to the Fire Safety Order and the government's update of supporting guidance to improve fire safety outcomes designed to protect the public from the risk of fire. What do the new regulations require responsible persons to do? You can check your fire safety responsibilities under the regulations on the government's website. The regulations require responsible persons of multi-occupied residential buildings to take specific actions. Those actions depend upon the height of the building. Occupants of all residential buildings should be, and feel, safe from fire, so some provisions apply regardless of height. More are needed once a building reaches 11 meters. And further requirements are introduced when a building reaches 18 meters, or 7 stories, or more. In all multi-occupied residential buildings that contain two or more sets of domestic premises, and have shared common parts, the requirements are to provide relevant fire safety information to their residents on how to report a fire, and what a resident should do once a fire has occurred. And to provide residents with information relating to the importance of fire doors. In multi-occupied residential buildings of over 11 meters in height, typically a building of five stories or more, the responsible person must also carry out routine checks of all fire doors in their building. This includes annual checks of flat entrance doors and quarterly checks of all fire doors in the common parts, such as doors to stairs. The majority of the requirements apply to high-rise residential buildings, at least 18 meters tall or 7 stories in height. For these buildings, the responsible person must install and maintain a secure information box for their building. This box must contain the name and contact details of the responsible person and hard copies of the building and floor plans. The responsible person must provide an up-to-date record of the design of the external walls of the building, including the materials used in their construction. The record must also provide information on the level of fire risk associated with the external walls, and any mitigating steps that have been taken. The responsible person is required to electronically share a copy of the record with the local fire and rescue service. The responsible person must prepare up-to-date floor plans and a single-page building plan which identifies key firefighting equipment. The plans will be used by firefighters during an incident and need to be clear, simple and easy to use. Copies of the plans must be shared electronically with the local fire and rescue service. And paper copies of the plans held within the premises secure information box. The Code of Practice for the Provision of Premises Information Boxes in Residential Buildings provides further guidance on secure information boxes, floor and building plans, and examples of best practice.
the responsible person must carry out monthly checks of lifts and other essential firefighting equipment in their building. Steps should be taken to address all faults, and any faults that cannot be rectified within 24 hours must be reported electronically to their local fire and rescue service. A record of the checks should also be available to residents of the building. The regulations provide a clear list of the equipment the responsible person is required to check. These are lifts provided for the use of firefighters and evacuation lifts, inlets and outlets for wet and dry rising water mains, smoke control systems, suppression systems such as sprinkler systems, fire detection and fire alarm systems, evacuation alert systems, and automatic door release mechanisms linked to fire alarm systems. The responsible person must install floor identification signs and flat indicator signs. This signage is intended to assist responding firefighters and should be visible in low light or smoky conditions. The responsible person of a high-rise residential building must send electronic copies of the external wall record, floor and building plans, and fault reports to their local fire and rescue service. This information will allow them to more effectively plan and respond to an incident in the building. Templates have been developed to assist the responsible person with preparing the required information. They were developed with the support of fire and rescue services and ensure a consistent approach to the information being shared. Every fire and rescue service has an information sharing page on its website explaining how, and in what format, they prefer to receive the building information. Responsible persons are advised to discuss any queries with their local fire and rescue service directly. What else do responsible persons need to do? The commencement of the Fire Safety Act in May 2022 clarified that the building's structure and external walls, including windows, balconies, cladding, insulation, and fixings, fall within the scope of the fire safety order. Information related to this risk must also be included within the record of the external wall required by the new regulations. Responsible persons should update any fire risk assessments that do not consider the external walls as quickly as practicable. An online tool is available to support responsible persons to develop a prioritization strategy for updating their fire risk assessments. The Fire Risk Assessment Prioritization Tool is available on gov.uk. This approach is designed to ensure that competent professionals who have the required skills to assess external walls prioritize their resources to buildings identified as high priority. The prioritization tool is not a fire risk assessment in itself and doesn't remove the requirement for both fire and rescue services and responsible persons to act upon known or suspected risk in all premises. Where can I find out more information? The Fire Safety England Regulations 2022 can be found on gov.uk. The government has also published new guidance to support responsible persons in complying with the new legislation. And there is also a series of fact sheets available which provide further information. Early in 2023, the government will publish additional guidance to assist responsible persons with the requirement to carry out fire door checks. Thank you for watching. We hope you've found this animation a useful summary of the regulations coming into force on the 23rd of January, 2023.